Hello, what about you? I'm Andy, and in this episode, I'm going to be painting my Mad Max vehicle from the previous build video and showing off some more of your build picks. So, before I start painting, here's some uh, picks from Loco Joe. Joe has a YouTube channel that's all about the bike and includes videos from his bike rides from all over the US and Canada. Uh, so, uh, well worth checking out his YouTube page and his uh, website. Uh, great job on these bats. These are actually built from stuff that he's found when he's been out and about on his bike rides. I really love some of the rust effects he's achieved on some of these builds. Really, really nice work, man. Nice job. And as usual, I'll leave a wee link for uh, Loco Joe's YouTube channel and website there in the description. So, on to my build. Primed and ready to go here from the previous episode. And uh, I suppose first things first, I should really get the wheels off. Just so I don't get them plastered in paint. It's just the usual plan of attack. I'll give it a stipple coat with some browns and reds uh, before I put on my final colour. Uh, so I've got my burnt umber and raw umber here already in my wet palette. Uh, this came in a bag, it was going cheap in the craft store so I picked it up and then I've got some khaki tan and some clay and then my two favourite scruffy brushes for doing my stipple coat so I'll just start with the largest scruffy brush I'll go to the darkest colour first here, my raw umber and just give it a nice stipple coat all over uh, I won't go too mad, I don't want to cover up all of that uh, oxide or red oxide undercoat so uh, yeah, just give it a stipple coat like I said, all over, take my time get it into all those nooks and crannies everywhere where I want rust exposed anyway and uh, then like I said just continue all over the whole build and then move down my palette through the colours and that's my first layer of stippling done that's the raw umber layer and uh, it's looking pretty good I think it's a quite nice effect just on its own but just for some more variety and a bit more texture I'll keep moving down my wet palette so moving on to the burnt umber I'll let same thing again, just load my brush up and carefully give it a stipple coat all over. And at this point if I am a bit heavy handed, I can still go back at the end and touch up anywhere that's not broken up enough with colour. And that's a second layer, a stippling done, that's my burnt umber. And now I'll just continue to move down my wet palette, uh, using my clay and then onto the khaki tan. And after a bit more dabbing, that's what I'm left with. Uh, and I know that the khaki tan does look very light at the minute but I'll be plastering this in dark washes later on so I don't need to worry about it being too light so now I'll take my slightly smaller scruffy brush and I'll just mix myself up a new shade of brown and then I'll go around with my smaller brush and just get into some of the places where I've missed or fill in some areas that are maybe aren't broken up enough and after a bit more dabbing um, that's the rust coat done so now I can move on to some colour but the Mad Max colour palette doesn't really have very many colours on it. There's uh, rust, uh, black or chrome. So I'm going to bend the rules a wee bit and go for some green. Uh, so I'll start, I'll mix up some light green just with some uh, holly green and some cadmium yellow. And this is going to be my undercoat. So I'll uh, paint this on but I'll uh, leave my edges exposed as usual. Uh, just any rusty areas that, that I want to leave showing, especially around these spikes. But I'm only going to do the sides and the back lobster tail and um, with the green so something like this and uh, like I said this is just the undercoat so I'll uh, I'll get everywhere that I'm looking down green undercoat at first and then I'll mix up some more darker green and go over it leaving those edges exposed so that's all the areas that I want painted green done and uh, I've already mixed up some darker green here but you can see it has leaked into my into my wet palette uh, so I just mixed in some of this Bahama Blue just to darken it down a bit but I'm not going to use that anymore, that's just going to turn into a mess and leach all over the place so I've mixed up a wee bit more here just on a bit of parchment paper and um, so yeah the, the darker green I'll do the same again I'll just paint up to the edge of my undercoat uh, just to leave some of that undercoat exposed and you've probably heard me say it a hundred times but I just really love this technique I think it really gives a nice weathered look and again I don't need to worry about the, the green being too light because I'm going to be really plastering this in, in some darker washes later on so it'll really darken down and yeah so just continue with the green something like this and you can see what I mean about those edges it just looks really sun weathered and uh, that's just one side done I still need to do the rest here 
So I'll uh, I'll continue doing the rest. And while I'm doing that, sure, here's a build from Jason Penwoody from uh, St. Ives in Cornwall. And this is his first build. And uh, I think it's a really cool build. He says he's not too happy with the paint job. But uh, flip me, I think it's spot on. The weathering's lovely. Just a cracker wee bat with loads of personality. So nice one, Jason. Keep it up, man. I can't wait to see some more. Alrighty. That's all my green done. And I know it's not very Mad Max. Uh, but it's all good. I'll, I'll darken it down with some black wash. Uh, so bear with me. Uh, but for now, I want to use some uh, black on the cab and on the flamethrower. Um, so I've mixed up a wee bit of grey undercoat for that. Uh, it's just the same same as the green. I'll, I'll paint on a lighter undercoat, which is my grey here. And then just leave a wee bit of this grey poking out when I paint over the top of it with my black. And I know the grey looks very, very light. But like I say, in the black wash will we'll darken it down a good bit. So I, I want to make sure it, it still stays grey. So that's all my panels done uh, that I'm going to paint black. That's them done with undercoat. And I can go back just and fill them in with some black. And as usual, just leave those grey edges just poking out and no more. I don't want too much of this grey showing. Alrighty. That's all my black done. And now I can move on to some black wash. And this should darken everything down and just tie, tie all those colours together. So I've got a wee bit of soapy water here. <laughs> it's a bit too soapy, but I'm going to use it anyway. And uh, I've mixed in a wee bit of my black paint just off the, off the parchment paper there. I think it's maybe a wee bit weak as far as colour goes, but I'm going to try it anyway here just to see what it does to this grey. I don't want this grey on the edges going too dark. So yeah, I think it's, it's way too weak. I'm going to have to mix up some more. <laughs> just with, with less water, more paint, and less soap. So while I'm doing that, here's another build from uh, Brianna, our Puppy Burrito 2.0. This is a lovely wee droid build. And she doesn't know whether to name this wee guy Stephen or Henry. So if you want to give her a wee hand, I'll leave her channel details in the description there. Alrighty, so I'll get some darker black wash mixed up here. I got rid of that other stuff, and I've just got some more water here. And uh, there's just a wee bit of, of, of soap in it. It just breaks the surface tension and helps, uh, helps the wash flow and all those cracks. So that, that's looking a wee bit darker now. And uh, I'll just test it here on the black first, uh, just to see what it dries like. So I'll put a wee bit on and then dry it with my hairdryer. And uh, just to see how it turns out. But I'll probably have to do a few coats anyway. And yeah, that's working much better than that other stuff. It's uh, just picking up those edges and darkening that down a wee bit. I'll just dry this with my hair dryer, see how it dries out. And yeah, that has dried out nicely. That's spot on. Um, that, that's going to darken all those colours down and, and just tie it together. After a few coats, I'll maybe give it two or three coats of this black wash. So I'll get my bigger brush and just continue to, to do the whole, the whole build with this black wash a couple of times. And I'll dry it out with my hair dryer in between. And like I was saying, this is just really darkened down that, that green paint. So that's one coat of wash done. Uh, just clean up as I go, go along here or it's going to get really messy. Uh, but yeah, that's a, the first coat of black wash. I'll, uh, like I said, I'll dry this with my hairdryer and then give it a few more coats. So this is it after uh, three coats of wash, j just the black wash. And it has really built up nicely, especially in the back here. Really like the sort of smoky effect it has made on the on the lobster tail here. And then on one of the side panels here, I painted a white square. I'm going to do a checkerboard pattern here. Just because I had a, a few people point out it's a bit orky looking. So uh, I thought I'd give a bit of a nod to that with a bit of checkerboard. So yep, looking looking really good. Very happy with it. And um, move on to some metallics now. This is some uh, worn penny metallic. I thought it would be better than just going straight in with some chrome. So I'm gonna just uh, dab it on around the flamethrower here, and then uh, some on the grills of the lights, uh, just to highlight those those grills on the lights a wee bit. And then I'll take some uh, kitchen paper and just clean most of the paint off my brush, and just go around and dry brush. Uh, pr pretty much everywhere where there's rust exposed, uh, you know, I, I don't want to do really any any dry brushing on anywhere I've painted. It just helps those details stand out a wee bit more and sort of sells the whole piece as being metallic. Um, so yeah, that's the worn penny done. I'll, I'll move on to a wee bit of uh, silver now. And this is my bottle of Extreme Sheen Silver. And that's the worn penny I was using earlier. 
that's it there on the on the parchment so uh, onto my silver extreme sheen I'll just do it on the pistons and I'll just do one coat uh, to start with because I don't want to cover up all of that uh, patina that, that I built up with my, my browns and then for my checkerboard I've just got a fine liner pen and I'm gonna draw out my grid and then I'll just fill it in with my paintbrush and that's my checkerboard done I know it's not very Mad Max either, but uh, it's a wee nod to the orcs. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, time for one more build. Uh, this is a Tombot. Uh, Tom sends his builds in by email. And this will be his, I think it's his third build, maybe his fourth. But this one's definitely his best so far. And uh, Neil the base, as usual. He was always good at making those bases. <laughs> so, nicely done, Tom. Keep them coming, man. Alrighty. So, I've got some fresh water. Again, just with a wee bit of dish soup in it. And I'm just going to take some of my colours from a wet palette just to mix up like a sort of sandy, muddy wash. And I'll just give a, give it a coat of this all over. Well, everything apart from the engine, I'm going to leave the engine just for a wee bit more black wash. Uh, just to try and uh, give it a wee bit of contrast between the two. And then I'll give it a quick blast with the hairdryer just to speed things up a bit. And that has darkened it down nicely again. And hope keep things tidy. And then I'll go back with my smaller brush and just add some streaks and just some drips all over again and this time what I'll do is I'll leave these just to dry naturally uh, because if I hit these with the hairdryer I'll just uh, blow them all away and, and they won't show so yeah I'll leave that for a couple of hours just to dry on its own and it comes out something like this uh, do you see what I mean about those, those sort of uh, streaks if I'd hit those with the hairdryer they, they wouldn't have stayed I would have, I would have blew those away oh, still a wee bit wet there underneath but that's okay so now I'll go back to my black wash. I just poured it out into this lid, eh, just because I knew I'd be using it. And I'll just do the engine with it, well the pistons, I'll just darken down that chrome. And then I'll do just this eh, panel line, just to highlight that a wee bit more. And eh, some of those rivets, just make those rivets stand out. So there we go, that's everything dried. I think I'm done with the washes now, I think that's enough sort of contrast between the, the engine and the sides. So I'll just get cleaned up and get these exhausts cut off because I really don't like them they're, they're maybe just a wee bit too long and they're just a bit spindly yeah, so what I've done is I've took some pens um, some felt tip pens on their lids and cut them up into sort of exhaust shapes and I give them a wee coat of black paint first and then I went over them with a coat of my Extreme Sheen Silver and so I'll just get those glued on and I'll just hit, hit them with some of my Miter Bond Activator just to speed up that glue dry time and there we go some new exhausts uh, I was always planning on sticking these on at the end just to like I say keep them clean and uh, just to have that bit of contrast between the the, the chrome and the, all the weathered stuff so yeah much happier with those they look much better and uh, just a better size you know, know so I'll just get cleaned up and then I'll use some of my powders uh, just to dusty it up a bit and give it some sort of sandy, dusty look. So while I'm doing that, it will be a good time to thank all my Patreon supporters. A big thank you to David, Wes, Luke, Matt, Alice, Cavo, Maggie and Barry. Thanks very much for all your support, really appreciate it. And thanks very much to you too for watching. Um, if you haven't already, uh, do me a wee favour and hit that subscribe button. Um, it doesn't cost you anything, sure, and if you change your mind later on, you can always unsubscribe. Alrighty, so I think that's about it for my weathering powders. Um, I would just need to do the wheels as well, just to sort of tie them in with the rest of the build. Um, so I'll just give them a bit of a, a, bit of a going over with some weathering powder. And... Uh, and then it's ready for a coat of lacquer. And then I can take some uh, glamour shots. So before that, back to me in the craft room. So there you have it. That's my first vehicle build done. Uh, the only thing I'll probably change is the front wheels. Uh, they just stand out a bit and don't quite look right. Uh, but other than that, I'm really happy with it. Really fun build. And thanks very much Emerson for the challenge. I'm looking forward to another one. For the next video, uh, Mark Kevin. Uh, made a request in the comments uh, for a bot with movable limbs uh, for start stop animation 
So I'm gonna see what I can come up with for that. So until then, thanks very much for watching, and I hope this was helpful. Uh, any questions or comments, you just know where to go there, down below, work away, and remember, there are no stupid questions here. Thanks again to all my Patreon supporters, really appreciate it, thank you. And if you want to help make these videos possible, and of course, get your name on the shelf, and there's a wee link there in the description. So, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!